All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. So hopefully you are here for the ULP Community and Open Source session. If you're not, yeah, <laughs> stay where you are. <laughs> so out of interest, who came to my, my session yesterday? Oh, oh man, check it out. Clearly I did something right. Uh, so yeah, I, I love you guys. Thank you for coming. For the rest of you that didn't come to my session, uh, uh, Facebook status is uh, complicated. Uh, hopefully by the end of today, that'll change and we'll all be friends, yay. So when doing this title, I think it was kind of interesting because I think if we look about five years ago, who would have guessed a Microsofty would be standing up here talking about open source? It's, it's kind of, I chuckled to myself, I was writing the title, I was like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm really going to say this. Uh, so, yeah, so basically I want to talk to you a bit, a bit about what we do at Microsoft around open source, and in particular UWP. Um, so, folks, my name is Shen Chohan, I think most of you already know me. So, you know the rules around my Twitter feed, great stuff, please tweet it, take photos. If it's terrible, please don't tweet it, uh, my manager will have a heart attack, um, but hopefully that will not be the case. So. Let's move on. So this, in 2014, was probably the biggest shock to most of you, right? You're like, what the hell? Wow, Microsoft, how have you hit the top? Uh, who here predicted in 2014 this is where we'd be? I like your honesty. <laughs> like everyone's like, nope. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, so the good news is, is that you know, we're still heavily investing in open source, and we firmly believe that it's, it's, a, it's a great thing, uh, not just for us, but for the community too. And um, I just thought it'd be great to show you, like, I know it says we have 16,000 plus in, in 2014, so it's grown, um, but the number of contributors, but I thought I would present just maybe a few slides demonstrating some of the projects that you may be using and not maybe realize they're open source, some of you will do. Um, I will warn you, um, yesterday I had about 20 rakias, so I decided after drinking that much, it was a good idea to edit my slides, and, and you'll probably see that I thought it'd be great to demonstrate the power of PowerPoint transitions. Uh, so let's just have a quick walkthrough and show you just some of the open source stuff that Microsoft is shipping. So, so you, as you, you'd like, if you think that's cool, wait till you get towards the end. You feel free to, to you know, round of applause if you really like it. It's, it's great feedback for the PowerPoint team. Uh, you're going to be clapping a lot. <laughs> so, .NET Framework. I'm sure everyone knows that one. MS Build. By the way, the Honeycomb is one of my favorites, so just so you know. Um, I thought I'd bring it up there earlier, but there's the killer ones coming at the end. MS Build. So I'm sure you all know that too. TypeScript. I think TypeScript was born in open source for Microsoft, so this is kind of an obvious one for those that write JavaScript. Or if you haven't ever done TypeScript before and you're a C-sharp developer, this is the most comfortable way, well, it was for me anyway, to, to actually start to use JavaScript, so take a look at that. That's all open source. Visual Studio Code. Don't know if people knew about code being open source too, so that's all on GitHub. And a few claps for that transition, I see. Oh, yeah, check it out. PowerShell. I'm sort of wishing they had ones like with the 3D glasses so you guys could really feel things flying at you. Uh, PowerShell, another very popular one. <laughs> CNTK, has anyone used this? It's all about cognitive machine learning, crazy stuff. One guy here, you're way smarter than me, that's for sure. <laughs> and then we have another one, which is its sort of sister, is the distributed machine learning toolkit as well. Um, pretty handy if you're heavily into ML. That's my favorite ones. Yeah. Uh, Win2D. So does anyone here use Win2D? It's great graphics. If you've done UWP as well, so they actually ship a, a UWP version of their stuff too, so you can utilize that. And I'll be showing you just a few of those uh, later on as well. Chakra, so our JavaScript engine. <laughs> the airplane is also pretty cool. The Monaco editor, does anyone know what the Monaco editor is? If you've used Visual Studio Code, yeah, a few hands. If you've used Visual Studio Code, the editor in Visual Studio is called the Monitor editor. All right, and this is also a really good one, so get ready for this. <laughs> That's cool, right? I like that one. Uh, as you can tell, it only took a few <laughs> drinks to get this far. Uh, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, so who's used Bash on Windows? 
Yeah. Who loves it? Keep your hands up. Thank you. <laughs> and Hollow.js, if you're building uh, mixed reality stuff, then we have a JavaScript library for that. And I believe the next one is the one you're all going to be like going crazy over. Oh, yeah. Come on, that, that, even I'm probably not, that was great. Uh, the DirectX Toolkit. So these are just a few of the, you know, the many projects we have uh, within Microsoft. Uh, and I thought, you know, this, before I did all this crazy transition, this was the slide you were going to get, but I just didn't feel it was exciting enough. Uh, but I, I just want to lay it out. that These are just some of the most popular ones that most people will know, but there's a ton out there, so go and have a look at them. So how does this relate to my session? Because most of you probably realize that these really aren't UWP stuff. It's just a lot of open source projects we do. And I thought what would be kind of interesting is I wanted to show you two of my favorites. Now, I could be biased because they're my favorites because I help with them a lot. Um, but the one I wanted to talk about first was Windows Template Studio. So has anyone used Windows Template Studio? Cheers, John. You're my best mate. Our relationship status is definitely not complicated now. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, if we look at the history of how this came about, this will give you a better idea. So when we released Windows 8 and you went, file a new project, we gave you some templates. And everyone went, yay, we've got templates. Except no one really altered the templates that much. I mean, they put their data into it, but all the apps started looking all the same. And we thought, oh, this is not really good because people aren't differentiating. People think that we're really strict and corporate Microsoft and there's only one way to build an app and that's with our templates. So do you know what our solution was with UWP? We gave you no templates. And do you know what happened then? Everyone went, what do we do? We can't do this. And we had all sorts of fun things, people trying to basically copy and paste it from the Windows 8 one and move it in. And we're like, no, don't do that. That's not what it's about. Um, and then we thought, how can we fix this? What is the best way to make sure that we give you the freedom to build the app that you want, but at the same time give you some guidance so you're not just left with an open canvas thinking, OK, now what, Microsoft? Thank you very much. This is not a good move. So we introduced Windows Template Studio. And with the help of some of our MVPs, so do you guys know what a Microsoft MVP is? A Microsoft Value Professional. Do we have a few in the room? Any in the room? No? They probably already know this stuff, so my talk's not going to be that interesting for them, which makes sense. Uh, MVPs basically are people that we value as professionals. They tell us when they don't like things, um, a lot. Uh, but they also tell us when things are going great, and they also help in the community efforts that we have. So this is just one of the things that they did. So let me basically give you a quick demo. And, and by the way, this session is predominantly demos. You've already seen on my slides, pretty much. I've got maybe two more. Um, however, as I caveated before, when you have a, a live coding demo, uh, things most likely will go wrong. Um, so let's start with getting you to a website. Speaking of going wrong, there we go. Let's try this. Ta -da. All right. So I'm at the the Windows Template Studio installation page. This ships as a Visix, so it's a Visual Studio extension. Um, I'm sure many of you have reinstalled Visual Studio extensions, so you know it's a simple case of hitting that big download button and then next, next, install, and Visual Studio will do its magic as long as it's not running. Um, one thing to call out here is that it's a really, really popular thing. So you can see here, it's got about 168,000 downloads. The 168,000 downloads was from our build time frame, which is in May. So you're talking roughly about seven months. So if I'm looking at the maths, I mean, I've probably got an app here that can help me with this. So <laughs> oh my god, the history from my last session. Can you believe it? Oh, it's so useful. So we're going to do what? Give me a number. <laughs> so, so we're roughly looking around like 24,000 downloads a month, which is, pretty, which is pretty good, right? So if you think about it, over a year, you're talking, what, 275-ish thousand downloads? Uh, and know that this is, 
this is just a, a one-time Visual Studio install, so it's not every time someone decides to use it. Uh, what I always find interesting here is, as well, like if you look down, that they always give you nice screenshots, which is always really handy. Um, but what's interesting for me is some of the ratings and reviews. Uh, so I don't know, sometimes when you read ratings and reviews, they make you chuckle a little bit. Um, so there's one definitely here which I thought was wor a worthy mention. So you can see here, makes my life so much easier now, even Donald Trump would love this. <laughs> so based on that premise, if Donald Trump likes Windows Template Studio, there is no reason for you guys not to love this thing. So, so let me show you what this is. Okay, so I've already installed it on my machine, uh, wanting to save some time here. And I'm just going to go over to my Visual Studio instance. And what you'll notice now is when I do file new, oh, file new project, there's a new thing called Windows Template Studio. Ooh, it's the magical one. Notice in the, the Windows Universal. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to give my app a real cool name like App One. Uh, probably don't need to get a report. Sorry? No, no, we don't do Pro. Well, we do ultimate. <laughs> um. So, we're going to use App 1 Ultimate Home Edition Pro. <laughs> Service Pack 1. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to hit OK on this. Now, normally, what would happen is you'd just be given a project with main page, and you know, if it's class library, class 1, which, as we all know, everyone deletes. Um, but this time, I'm presented with this beautiful thing. What is this beautiful thing, you ask? It's a wizard. Yes. So, so let me walk you through what this wizard does. So we have the traditional blank application for those who feel that they don't need any help and would rather just show off to the rest of the world that they don't need any help. We have the pivot and tabs, very traditional, you know, the usual menu at the top, and you can swipe and do all the magic. We have the navigation pane, ooh, otherwise known as the hamburger menu to the rest of us. Um, and this is kind of interesting, because what you've noticed is we no longer just have the simple shove everything in the code behind. Uh, some people here like to use frameworks. Anyone here use MVVM? Quite a few of you. Any of you use MVVM Lite? Cool. MVVM Basic? Fantastic. Caliburn? Oh, yeah, I never used that one either. Uh, so MVVLM Lite is the one I always use, to be honest. So I'm going to select Next. Now, guess what happens when I hit Next? No one? Sorry? Another page. Uh, crash. crash. So, <laughs> look, I don't know who invited you to my session. <laughs> no, it will not crash. <sighs> See, told you. <laughs> All right. So what I have here is just the basics of now creating a project. Now, normally, you're just presented with a main page. But with Windows Template Studio, they do a really nice thing. They say, hey, you know what? You're going to want more than a main page, hopefully. Uh, and with that, why don't you go and choose the options you want? So in this case, I probably will want a blank page. And you can see here where it says page is what I've got. So I'm going to say blank page. I'm going to call this page one, uh, just because that's as exciting as I can get. Um, settings, we all want a settings. Yeah, we'll have one of those. Web view, mm, media, no. Master details, yes. The grid, I probably don't need grid. Charting, well, since this is hosted you know, with our friends with Telerik outside, um, please go and check out some of their controls if you're interested in, in what you see here. But you'll see here that as I hit the I, that actually this is a community contribution. This, this isn't something that's come directly from Microsoft. This is something that someone in the community has gone, you know what, I really need these red charts in this template studio, so let's go and add them. Uh, so yeah, let's go and add that. That's going to be pretty cool. Shall we have a map? Does everyone know what they are? All right. I'll take that as a yes. Uh, and a camera, because everyone loves selfies. Cool. So what you're now going to see here is, you can see I've got my pages lined up. You might not like the order, for example, so you might say, well, actually, I want my main page above my main, or, sorry, yeah. Let's just move that back. So you can have a play around with that, and you can delete stuff. And I'm going to hit Next. Does anyone know what happens when I hit Next? All right, the guy that keeps saying it's going to crash. <laughs> Ye of little faith. Uh, 
So I get this. And what it's going to ask me here is, so what features would I like in my application? So suspend and resume, like that's a given. Do I have a background task? No, uh, only one in the foreground. And this is kind of cool, so I can have a toast notification. I'll add one of those in. I don't really want an Azure notification in this case, because I haven't set that up. Um, I want a live tile. When the app first runs, yeah, I'll take one of those. This is like shopping, isn't it? You just keep hitting plus, plus, plus. The great thing is everything is free for everybody. Um, and URI scheme. So that's basically, um, you can do protocol activation. So I can launch my app with maybe many parameters and, and do it basically in a, a deep dive directly into the app without having to launch it in uh, various places. So does anyone know what happens when I hit create? And if someone says crash, <laughs> some. So when you hit create, it's going to go and create a project, funny enough. And I'm going to show you what that project is because I've already got it done. Um, what it does is it'll create this project, it'll pull down all the NuGet packages, it'll set up all the pages, and you can see here you'll get your traditional MVVM like, because that was the option that I chose. And this is what we finish with. So shall we start it up and see what happens? Yes? No? No one really cares at this point? Yeah, yeah. Now, you guys are so much quieter today. I feel like the calculator, I peaked then. I should have done that session today. So I'm going to run this up. So the good news is you don't just get a blank application anymore. You get this. What is this? So this is my first welcome screen. If you remember, I hit the plus, and I said, hey, give me a welcome screen the first time I, I use this app. So it conveniently reminds you to replace the contents of this dialog. And if I find that people have used Windows Template Studio and have not replaced this dialog, I will hunt you down. I promise you. Uh, I'll hit OK. Uh, notice I also had the toast there as well come out. And this is my main page. Conveniently, it says main, so you know. Page one, the chart, the Teleric chart. Ooh. Uh, OK. We have my master details, which has pretty much a bunch of lorem ipsum. We have the map, so we know where we are. So we'd like to access your precise location. Yes. So clearly, this is in uh, Seattle right now. And hopefully, with the Wi-Fi kicking in, boom. Apparently, that's where we are. I have no way of verifying that, because I have no idea where I am. Uh, but yes, I'm somewhere in an IMAX theater. That looks right. Uh, and the final thing here, the camera. So let's uh, give this a whirl. I'd like to access my microphone. Sure, why not? <laughs> All right, guys. Your turn. Well. Hey. OK, cool. So I think we can now determine that my app works and for that person didn't crash. Um, but the thing is, <laughs> hey, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's already seen this demo before and knows what's going to happen. <laughs> so in a nutshell, this is what it does. Now, I think it's really cool. I don't know what you guys think. Would you use this? Yeah, yeah cool. Would you contribute to this? That's the question. Who here already contributes to open source projects? A few of you? Who would like to contribute to more open source projects? Do you see what I'm getting at here? Because if you would like to contribute to more open source projects, I have just one of the too many projects you'd be fantastic at contrib contributing to. So I'm going to go here to the GitHub. And notice here that actually we've started doing a, we have a particular trend now, uh, especially on the UWP stuff around when you're going to contribute, how you do that. Uh, we don't firmly believe in just dropping in random code and thinking, oh, yeah, this is great. I'll just move it across. We have some principles. It all sounds very official when we say principles. It really isn't. We just made it up. Uh, so let me go down here. OK. Generated templates will be kept simple. Yes, because we don't like complicated stuff. So if anyone tries to submit anything with an Ultimate Home Edition Pro, we will have words with you. <laughs> um, and I think this is the main point. Regardless of whether you're contributing or using, just remember that this is a starting point. This is not the finishing point. So don't treat this as, now my application's all done with all this lower MIPS, and maybe I should just go ahead and submit it to the store. Uh, that's not what we're after. We're after you know, to get you up and going and be as productive as possible, as quickly as possible. And this is the one thing that we're trying to do here. OK. 
And then I think you sort of get the rest. And the main thing here is we all say, follow the .NET core coding style guidelines. So with that, what happens now when if you looked at the map, you noticed one thing. Did anyone notice something with the map? Should I bring it up again? Where's my hammer? Yeah, someone noticed I needed a token. So as a developer, the, the most difficult thing is to know what you need to do once you've generated this. Well, thankfully, they've done a really great job here. So now if you go to the task list, because I selected pretty much everything, I got a lot of work to do, <laughs> basically. But the idea here is, is that you can just start double clicking and it'll actually give you all the information you need and what you need to do and how you need to implement this. So you can start checking off from that list very quickly. Uh, and this will make sure that your application is you know, behaving to its full extent, making sure that the user gets the most pleasant experience possible. This is kind of really handy, especially if you're a developer, because most of us don't always uh, abide by whatever we get told to do in the backlog. And this is just one nice way of capturing that. So I want to go back to my slides now. Hopefully, you guys will see that soon. All right. So the next one, guess what the slide transition is going to be now? No, it's nothing. I, at this point, I think I decided it was time to get to sleep. Uh, <laughs> so the UWP Community Toolkit, this is the second one I want to talk to you about. Who's used this? OK, that's cool. Cheers, John. Use everything I put up on GitHub. It's fantastic. Have you seen a calculator app I've got? Check it out. Um, I'm being serious. I don't know why people are laughing. Uh, so building apps is designed to be as simple as copy and paste. Now, I want to clarify this, because I got called out last time when I presented about the toolkit. I do not mean copy and paste code that does not belong to you, or you do not have permission to copy and paste from. Uh, what I mean is you can copy and paste from the toolkit, because I'm happily going to give you that code if you want it. Uh, so it's as easy as copy and pasting from the toolkit, uh, just, to be, just to be clear here. Uh, you can go here, the AKMS UWP Toolkit. Uh, and on Twitter, it's got a hashtag as well. So before I demo the toolkit, uh, I'll give you a brief history about how this one started, because we just don't randomly start a repository up. Uh, again, it was from our MVPs. What we realized was is that UWP is still an, it's an evolving platform, right? So there's still loads of things that we're still working on and building. But one of the key things we wanted to make sure was that we could help people develop their applications the way they wanted to, you know, and not be limited or restricted by things. And we had all our MVPs building out various controls and libraries, and then carrying it around in their, in, you know, in their version of their toolkit, so my MVP toolkit. And no one was really sharing that information. There was no way to collate all that great you know, pieces of code and bring them in one central spot. And this is how this was basically born. We said to the, the MVPs, how about we start an open source repository and we'll, we'll be able to host for it. You guys put your controls in, and then we'll let the public also add their controls too. And that's how this was born. So let's give you a quick demo of this one. So I'm going to take my, let's do this. I'm going to show you, this. I think I'll probably show you the sample app first. So the one thing you can do here is, yeah, it takes a different approach than what you would do, um, usually from you know the Windows Template Studio, for example. So in this case, we have a sample app. And the idea of the sample app, and I'll, I'll show you what the sample app does in a minute, um, but it allows you to play with all the controls in the library uh, before you actually have to use them. Uh, this is kind of a nice thing, because as a developer, Sometimes it's always difficult to read the documentation and understand how things work. And you see screenshots of what things should look like, but you really never know what to put in. Um, and this is where the sample app really does a great job. And, and again, the screenshots and stuff. But I want to show you the reviews, because if you thought the last review was uh, impressive on Template Studio, let's go to, and notice as well, this actually has a great rating, 4.9. Whoever that one per two people are, they gave us two stars. We're in the process of finding them. They will be dealt with, don't worry. So there's one here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think it's on the last one, because this is initially when we launched. Here you go. Apparently, God had sent this application. Now, I mean, if God sent it, you have no reason not to use it as well, right? I mean, like, 
at some point in your life, God will ask you, did you use the toolkit? <laughs> and you can't lie. You just can't. Like, so based on this feedback, you've got to use it. So let me now show you why this is worth it. Was that me? No? OK. Oh, OK. I sometimes get confused with these Britney Spears microphones. It's a... Uh... OK. So as you can see, that this application is already using some of the Fluent Design stuff that I talked about yesterday. It's got some acrylic in there. It actually tells you all the new stuff that's coming. It's telling you about all the useful links you can go to in Dev Center and all the documentation. Um, it looks very familiar uh, as the Visual Studio start screen. Um, but in general, when a new release is out, this is where you'll come. And we have controls. Ooh, look at that animation. Uh, it's almost as good as my calculator. Um, so you'll notice here we've got a ton of different controls. Some of them, people are very familiar with things like the doc panel from WPF. So we have a doc panel. Um, there are other things like drop shadows. We have a uh, hamburger menu. Now what's interesting here is when I go back to the um, Windows Template Studio, Windows Template Studio takes a dependency on the toolkit. So basically what's happening is, is that you're already using the toolkit when you're using Windows Template Studio. Um, and let me show you some of the cool things you can do here. So if we take maybe the orbit view, uh, you can change various properties. So there's my face there. Don't I look good? Uh, maximum size of items. You can make them click enabled. You can change the anchor colors. Well, you're probably not anchors enabled. There you go. And things like this. Now, what's really interesting is, is like if I take something like, uh, let's take animations. Let's do a blur, because everyone needs a bit of blurring. What you'll notice here is that as I'm changing this value, notice that it's like 8.9. OK, let's make it 7. All right. So we're going to say it's roughly around 7. Now, when I go to XAML, what you'll notice here is it keeps that same value. See so if I then change it, and I go down to 1, because 7 and 1 seems to be my favorite number. Um, you'll see here that actually it changes it again. The reason why it's changing it is because it's already priming me for a copy and paste. So if I like what I see on screen, I just copy and paste, uh, which is really handy. But also, the toolkit does more than just controls and animations. It does things like notifications. So yesterday when I showed you the notification from the not notification visualizer, actually the code you were copy and pasting was from the toolkit. Um, we have services. So we have Twitter, OneDrive, Facebook, Bing, you name it. And again, you can interact with these. Um, shall we try and interact with one of these? <laughs> shall we try Twitter? OK, here we go. Yes, yes, I know. I'll change the keys once this session is over. Security is key. We shouldn't be giving you all my information. All right. I'm going to connect. Now, I've already authenticated my account. So you can see straight away now, just by giving that three pieces of information, I can now connect to Twitter. Um, and what code did I really execute? Well, it was actually just this. And then it ran this stuff to, to get different things. So sh shall we try sending a tweet? And then shall we, no, it's not going to crash. Shall we, <laughs> all right, I'm going to get security on you in a minute. Uh, what we'll do is we'll send out a tweet, and let's see if we can get this working. So I'll send it. So what shall I write? Don't crash. This is going to the world. I can't write don't crash. If my manager sees this, he'll be like, why did you tweet that? Uh, hello, DevReach. Hashtag DevReach. Welcome to the UWP British toolkit. Think of something funny. What's a Bulgarian funny thing? Right here. Yeah, that's alcohol is the solution to everything, is it, in this country? <laughs> is that how it works? All right. <laughs> it wasn't solving any problems for me yesterday. I'm telling you that now. Not especially this morning. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Countdown. Ready? Three. Two, one. <laughs> Did he go? Did he go? Can someone check? Someone just scream yes, even if you're not checking. 
Perfect. See, it worked because that guy screamed yes. <laughs> oh, someone got a clap. That's me. Really did work. Great. Okay. So, apart from just UI stuff, you know, it's got a ton of other cool things here too. And notice that we're doing things like blurring and acrylic and all that magic here. Um, so you can do Bluetooth stuff. You can do things like printing. So. Common thing is people always want to say, hey, I want to try and print out my UI. Well, actually, we have an easy way for you to copy and paste. Um, if you want it, you just hit print me, and all of a sudden it brings up the dialog with your UI that you've arranged there. That's kind of handy, so we took all that hard work out. Some of you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm actually now tailing my device for a dial, so you could have this text box dial control. We have masks, we have extensions. We even have some developer tools as well, so analytics and focus trackers. Um, these are all very handy tools for everybody. But I think the one thing, oh, I've got to stop doing that. So the one thing I want to do is I'm going to edit my Windows Template Studio application. And this is how we're going to do it. So I'm going to go to my master details. No, actually, no, let's do a connected animation first. I think that'd be kind of cool. So let's go to animations, connected animations. So this is all, remember I talked about Fluent yesterday, one of the key things is motion. So here's a demo of what motion looks like in a UWP app. So you can see here I've got this purple rectangle. I'm gonna click that. It takes me to a second page with a list view. I might click something in the list view, and then it's gonna take me to a more details page. Uh, and you can see her playing with this all day long. Uh, it pretty much works fantastically well. So let's, let's do this. Let's copy this guy out. And I'm going to go to main page. And conveniently, they have some comments there saying, hey, put your code here. So I'll do that. Um, now, it's complaining because it's like, hey, I don't have that namespace. What is it? Well, that's because I haven't added the NuGet reference. So I'm going to add that NuGet reference in now. Uh, and it's animations. And notice one thing here. What I'm doing is I'm not downloading one NuGet. So I don't have that massive overhead of like a 30 meg new get thing that I need to have because my application wants to use it. What we've done is we've broken them down into smaller chunks and then put the dependencies in. So the nice thing about this is that if you're building an application, you're only taking the bits you need. Um, and it sort of saves you a lot, especially on like load times and stuff where a lot of these get loaded. So in this case, I'm going to go and use the animations, which you can see already has UI, Win2D, because we do blurring and things. Uh, and I'm going to install. Yes. So oh, do I accept? Do I trust Microsoft? Yes. I like the way some of you are laughing like he really should do. <laughs> okay, cool. We're done. So now I've got animations in. Now I've just got to add the namespace to my XAML. So I'm going to go back here. And the wonderful people at the toolkit have given me a sample that I can just Copy and paste. Now, I would warn you that if you've not done copy and paste that often, you should practice. Uh, copy and pasting in the wrong place can be pretty tragic. Uh, trust me, I know. Um, no, I genuinely do know. Yeah, it's <laughs> After using the toolkit, I've become a professional. Um, so now what I've done is I've got my, my one rectangle on the main page, but I also want to make sure that when I go to one of the other pages on the hamburger, like maybe the page one that I created earlier, I want to make sure that from there I can see that rectangle get bigger and maybe we'll just add some lorem ipsum blur text. So I'm just going to basically take this version and put it in here. So I'm going to say page two. Uh, we'll take that. Copy, and then again, I'm going to put it in here. I'm actually not going to put this list view in because I don't have any data for it. And do we know why this is squiggling? Yeah, Shane, we do. Because you said earlier, it's here. All right, so I'm going to grab this. You guys are probably thinking, man, I came to a talk, and all he's doing is copy and pasting. Uh, but this is how you're going to do it. Is, OK, so now I'm going to hit play. And now, no, it won't crash. It, it's going to load up my application. And what we should hopefully see is a purple rectangle. And when I click on page one in the navigation, 
what will happen is it'll do a connected animation, and you, it'll be so seamless you won't even realize that I've done the page swap. So here we go. So as I go here, okay, cool. Isn't that cool? Woohoo! Yeah, I like that person. <laughs> So you can see here, it's really easy to do on a connected animation. Now, there are other things that, you know, that I might want to do. So if I have a look, for instance, at the master details, I might decide that order total, for example, I probably don't represent that as a number. Um, sometimes I want to use something else. So how about in this case, we just quickly look through the toolkit. And I notice there it's like 2,490, so it's, it's kind of high. Let's just see what the highest is like, 2,400. Yeah. OK. So I'm going to go in the toolkit. I'm going to go to controls. Which one do we like the look of? I think this one. OK, so again, you can have a play here. Um, this is my favorite thing. Like, I know that there's somebody's job to decide the colors of things. But I'm telling you right now, like, whoever has a lawn, lawn green, this color, clearly has issues because no lawn is ever that radioactive green. You know, like, how many people have seen grass that green? Um, and then my other favorite, <laughs> and, and this is how you know it gets even more exciting. My talk is really exciting at this point when I tell you about, oh, yeah, old lace. Old lace. Who would have thought old lace is that color? I did, ch yeah, that's the thing. I changed it. Like, see? Mm. Old lace, it's not what you think it is. It's like a pale white. As a matter of fact, it's so, it's so close to some of the other ones we've got. Um, but I think I'm going to stick with this color because it just looks terrible. Um, so now I've decided I'm going to use this controller and I want to bind to it. The other thing is I could do is I could say, well, actually, I don't like the circle. I could make it go a bit weird. We, we could actually just do this. Or should we just do it for fun? Uh, so <laughs> will you render OK? Yeah, look at that. Someone knows their math. Um, okay, and the other thing I want to do here is because remember it was out of 3,000 and clearly this is only going up to 100, so I need to do some changes here. So I can go here and I can say, okay, well, I want to make it, you know, at this point my maximum is going to be 3,000. And as I click away, and what you notice there, it made the changes directly on screen because this is actually the Monaco editor. So why is that so special? I mean, surely anyone could have done that, but actually what's nice is it actually even gives you things like errors. So if you mistype something, the editor goes, hey, you, this line, there's a problem. Uh, and you can just go ahead and, and fix the problem. Uh, that was probably the only one thing I didn't copy and paste. Um, but the, the nice thing here is because you're, you know, you're using the same engine that Visual Studio Code is using, you sort of almost have that, that guarantee that things are just going to work how you expect them to. So I'm going to copy my radial progress. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go to, oh, I don't want to go to main page. Where do I want to go? I want to go to, let's stop this. I want to go to master, master Details, Details Control, Home Ultimate Pro Edition. OK. So thankfully, this is just all in a stack panel, so it doesn't look too complicated. So I should just be able to paste that in there. Uh, I'm going to take this, because I want to take the order total away. And I'm going to go in and put it in the value column. Oh, make sure I got doop, doop, doop. Cool. And he's going to want the controls namespace. So I'm going to take that too. And we're going to paste it in there. And there we go. And remember that because this is inside the main application, it's already got the hamburger menu. So it's already got the NuGet package for controls. It's already magically in there. So all I have to just do is just drop the namespace in, and I'm done. So who thinks this is going to work? Man, really, guys? Like, you haven't seen a single one of my demos go wrong yet, and you're all, like, still not confident? All right. Here we go. Thanks for your support. I really enjoy having you as an audience. <laughs> All right. There's my rectangle. Should we go to the master details? Shall we see what happens? What? That's nuts! And look at that. Oh, man. 
almost as good as my calculator. Um, so thank you for applauding my copy and pasting abilities. I really appreciate that. That was one of, one of the many things in my career that I strived to do when I was young. Um, so this is just like a very quick, brief, whistle-stop tour of what's possible. Um, but I just want to show you some interesting stats around uh, the toolkit itself. So if I go here and I show you, let's go to the, uh, the new Git page. So one thing to notice here is it's got a ton of downloads. So clearly, somebody out there loves it. Maybe it's an application sent from God. I don't know. But it, in essence, if you work out, the toolkit's about, what, 50 months old? It was literally one year old in August. Um, so even that number, I mean, if I use my calculator, um, it's probably about 24,000 uh, a month, which is pretty good. Um, and again, as I said, you, these are all broken down into smaller chunks. And what you can do, so in this instance, is you can actually pull down. We have two different releases. Uh, we have the main release, uh, which I'll show you here. We have a production release, which is version 2. And we have a pre-release, which is beta tested. So the, the thing I showed you today was a pre-release, just so I could show you some of the connected animations. But I encourage you actively to go and play with this and see what you think. And if there's any feedback, you should provide it. Now, let me give you an example uh, of, a, you know, of something that people have written. So apart from just the traditional, you know, everything's there. And we have, again, we have principles, pretty simple. And there's a roadmap. But I just want to show you, um, if you want to go and add something to a project, we have the issues list. And you will see some cool stuff that's coming in here. But I want to show you to what extent people are passionate about this project. Um, so I'm going to show you the tab control. Right. Now, I know you can see the number, but do you really think you would get 94 comments on a tab control? It all started off fantastically well. This gentleman here gave screenshots and everything with dimensions and said, I think this is how we should propose it. No, somebody said, this is not how I feel. You should do this control. And they're like, what do you mean? And it goes on. They have a conversation. It's, it's pretty good. I mean, and then some of the Microsoft guys get involved. Um, and you can see here that people are very passionate about how this works. Then we have some of the folks from engineering get involved. Um, we have some more people, and it keeps going. Someone just thinks, yep, fine, fair. Uh, it keeps going. We have some random person with an avatar of Avatar. <laughs> uh, say, yeah, I got an interesting one for you. It keeps going. Then the avatar dude with the avatar carries on. And then all of a sudden, from nowhere, someone goes, hey, you know what? There's another way to implement this. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, look, OneNote do it. Yeah, I'm not sure that's right, though. Um, OK, well, what else happens? And then, again, someone else goes, oh, there's loads of conversation. And then, look, I've got this cool demo you can use. Do you think this would be perfect for this solution? And then it's, about, it's, it's great, because it's all about various you know, players in the sport. And someone goes, ah, I'm not sure this is right. And then, this is how Windows is doing it. Yes, I like that idea. Yes, I think we're all in agreement. Yes, and by the way, if you think this conversation is ever going to end, in fact, it doesn't. You know why? Because they're still discussing it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, after a discussion, we agree that this control does not fit well with the current requirements. So this is still obviously ongoing. Um, they're having a conversation. But it just goes to show you the, the level of passion within that group. Uh, these people really want to make sure that whoever uses the controls, uh, we get it right. Right? Uh, and you can see here that they're, they're not Microsoft people, they're people from the, the public, they're MVPs, they're developers. Uh, so I would actively encourage you, even if you're not going to write code, um, go and have a look on the issues list. See what you like the look of and think, hey, this might be useful for me. Uh, go and comment, give us feedback, let us know how all this works. Um, because they're striving to make it the best. And then once we look at what's in the toolkit, what will end up happening is, as the platform starts evolving, they will take a look at the toolkit and say, 
hey, you know what things are doing well in the toolkit? Maybe we should make this a platform control. Maybe we should have uh, something that you know, Microsoft can say, well, yes, this is now on the platform, so you don't need to rely on a third-party toolkit for this particular piece. Uh, and that's what we've done. So the hamburger control is a classic example of that. So now we have the navigation view. The toolkit actually has a way of helping developers move off from the toolkit onto the platform. So it's really useful for you. So. Who's going to use the toolkit? God is watching you guys. You've all better have your hand up. I like that, because now I can use that sort of emotional blackmail to everybody. It's just like, um, yeah, so let's go back. Alrighty. So with that, I want to say thanks for listening. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked it, this. If you don't like it, yeah, you still got to do this. Uh, uh, but appreciate all the feedback, and hopefully you have a great rest of the day. I'm here for questions if you guys need it, because I know I've got 10 minutes. Cool. Thank you.